Chris Henry with the University of Nebraska Lincoln. I'm an extension engineer and we're here at Mel Meister's uh, veg sprinkler vegetative treatment system. We're going to talk about uh, how this system works. Mel, well, you were telling me this farm was built in 1870? Right, for great grandfather. You're a third generation farmer? I'm the third generation. But you're not farming now? Not farming, I'm retired. So why do you have this system in place? Well, the tradition was we always had the feed yards and stuff, and whether it was cows or whatever, and we really didn't want to quit it. The tenant was interested in commercial feeding and so forth, so we continue on. We go ahead and put in what's necessary so he can continue to farm, and uh, what else would you do? I mean, it's necessary to keep it out of the water. That's what we'll do, okay. the manure. So. So what we've got here is a, veg a sprinkler vegetative treatment system. So originally all the runoff water from the 800 head feedlot ran down this waterway. Right. Down across into the neighbors. Well, it traveled down through the neighbors and we do have a road structure which ca caught a lot of the residue, but it still goes on to another half mile and it's in the creek at that yeah, point. So you wanted to stop all that. That's so right, we, we have to. So. With that diversion, we collect all the runoff water in the collection channel. We bring it into this sediment basin here. Right. And uh, and you guys didn't want to put a holding pond in, so we we put in this vegetative treatment system as well, an alternative. It's, it's kind of about money. This was a lot re lot cheaper and a lot more reasonable for this size. That's why I like this. You know, a big system wouldn't work because we really can't irrigate these hills very well. So. You know, that's, that's all part of the system that makes this work and something else wouldn't. That's what I like. Great. Well, let's talk a minute about how the whole system works. So we've got a intake structure that actually is made out of a picket structure and has a steel uh, screen in it. And then there's a, a sump below that draws the water so we can get the sediment basin completely dry. Right. Right. And we, it comes up this intake. And this is a B-series Berkeley pump standard centrifugal pump, uh, check valve, high pressure relief, and then we've got these Amiod filters, right? And that just keeps the trash and the, uh, the bugs and flies and stuff out, right? They're really effective too. And we've got air vac relief. And let's talk about the pump for a minute. This is a 30 horse Dutes Alice, Dutes pump, right. air cooled Deutz, right? Right. With an exhaust primer and a full set of Murphys there. Right. We use diesel fuel because diesel fuel doesn't go stale on us like gasoline, so it's always right. ready to go. Yep. Uh, how long does it take you to start this pump up? Most times we you've got it running vacuumed and actually pumping within five minutes. Then it may take another five minutes to fill, you know, to pressure the line to where it starts moving, and yeah. then it's in a full engagement. So we take the, the water from the sediment basin, comes in through the pump, and goes down out through the J-drop, goes underground. There's the main line valve, and the main line goes straight up to the vegetative treatment area. Right, right. So we've got 1.35 acres of VTA per one acre of open feedlot, feed lot. and with the, with the extra land application area of the corn or the cropland, we've got a two to one ratio okay. of, of distribution area per feedlot acre. Seems to be adequate, you know. Works very, pretty good. Yeah, very good. And really good, vigorous stand of vegetation. <laughs> There's a lot of hay. There's a lot of hay. A lot of hay. Okay, Mel, now we're here at the top of the vegetative treatment area, and this is the sprinkler part of the, the vegetative treatment system. Uh, we've got 4.3 acres on one side of the road, 4.3 acres on the other side of the road, there's a riser in between, and then there's another 4.3 acres of just cropland we can use. This is one of the risers. Uh, there's uh, there's six inch underground pipe. There's two spurs, and then uh, from the spur there come up uh, a two inch riser right. with two inch cam locks. And each riser then feeds eight feeds two K line pods right. pod lines. Each each line has uh, nine. nine pods, nine. and there's eight of them. Right. And we shift them from one half of the VTA to the other half of the VTA, and then you can also use them again in the land application area. Right. It's a, a very practical system, I guess that's what I would call it. You know, it works, it sprays the whole area so you can continue to pump 
without any runoff. That's practically zero. And that's what makes it so effective. Is you cover the whole area, soaks in, use it for hay. You, you brought up a good point, Mel, that we get really uniform distribution. Right. We put it on at a rate that's less than the intake rate of the soil, so the soil's, there's no runoff. That's, a, and then, that's uh, a big issue there. And then it's easy to get out of the way so you can manage. Right. You know, one of the caveats with gravity slope VTAs or gravity distributed VTAs is that you don't get even distribution down no. the slope of the VTA. No, this, so this, this really overcomes that. And does, does we didn't have down. to do any land leveling and it was already here and we just right. laid pipe and we were able to get the VTA established before we actually built it. Mel, let's talk about how you manage the uh, the grass. Now we now we don't pasture this. this is, we treat this as hey, this is intensively managed right. treatment area. Uh, how many times a year do you harvest the grass? It's kind of like the old native pre uh, haylands around here. We used to cut them the first uh, second week of June. That'd be a fast, high, tall hay. Then they'd cut it about the second week of August, which is very nice, short. You know, it'll be dense but it'll be a shorter, finer hay, and everybody loves that hay because it's good. So two cuttings, looks like six ton, five ton, right in that neighborhood. Which is really good hay for this area. Yeah, it's very good hay. How do we manage the pods? How do you, manage I'll the talk pods. about how we, we, we uncouple and they're just two inch cam locks and, and you can drag them around with the, Tim can drag them around with the four wheeler. Right, we do it with the four wheeler or the pickup. We go this way and that way, but what we try to do is log how many inches we stuck over here this summer and by if it keeps raining we'll have to get over here because we'll probably be up in that six seven inch area so then we'll move over there but after the hay we'll pretty well stay here I think for this summer because we pumped all the spring water over there and we can go out in the field for the late winter early spring and that gives us a little pressure release here so we don't have to have everything over here. You don't have to move it all the time. You basically split the water from the treatment right. area from the feedlot onto the treatment area. Okay this this VTA is seeded to creeping foxtail, meadow brome, intermediate wheatgrass, and orchard grass. And the total cost of the system is about fifty eight thousand dollars and it's about nine thousand dollars a feedlot acre. Uh, so the area of the feedlot acre per for the total cost, it was about $58,000 for the whole system combined. Okay. $73 a head, which is very economical for a small small feedlot compared to what it would have cost to put in a holding pond. In my opinion, it's worth every cent to keep it out of the water. That's got to be number one. And the rest of it is it blends in with the farming operation. It's not a big problem. You know, there's no excuse not to do it. That's my opinion. It's very scenic. You don't have a oh, big yeah. holding pond up here you have to look yeah. at every day. And the you just odor, got grass. the odor's an issue too because if this is managed properly, cut, pumped on time, it's pretty much odor free because we can have a north wind and we don't really notice it on the other side of the trees. So that well, part's good. It's right next to your house, so yeah, your wife's not true. complaining about no. the odor. And that's a no, good point. It, We're not storm manure, it's relatively right. fresh, so the odor's got a lot different character yeah. than it does if it was stored. Yeah, it's. it's does its job. I'm well satisfied. All right. Well, thanks, Mel, for all for showing us your vegetative treatment system. Okay. Thank you. I'm happy to give it to you. Mm -hmm.